Trevor, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, good. finally good. we can, we can yeah. hear you now. Um, yes, I, good, I can hear you, good, Mr. Singh. We are on now. We, we have been looking for you. <laughs> yeah, I just shot up two mails also to you, Trevor. I mean, we couldn't figure out where you were. Yeah, it's early morning in US. Yes, yes it's, uh, it's 6 a.m. here. Yeah. Hmm. Still 6 a.m., still dark outside. <laughs> okay. No, 6 a.m. is dark here in Delhi also. But it's not 6 a.m. Now we are uh, past 6 p.m. and it's already dark. Yeah, it's exactly 12 minutes past 6. Okay, anyway, Trevor, um, let us not spend uh, more time. Uh, I think instead of my introducing you and spending time on that, let us go directly to your presentation. So uh, the stage is yours. So the other thing that we request you to do, Trevor, is where you saw the green button on the left-hand side of that, the second button talks about share video and stop video. If you were to click that, we would also see you. Uh, it's okay. I'm pretty ugly and my camera's not working. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> let, let Trevor, we can see your screen perfectly. Yeah. So thank you so yeah. much. Okay. So here we go then. Um, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, um, I was asked to... Uh, give a brief talk on the current situation in Africa. Uh, I felt, unfortunately, that there was not enough content to make the 45-minute the speech, so I suggested half on Africa and half on the operational Garrett's that are still functioning in the world today. And this was agreed to, so this is the African portion. And of course, there is some duplication because Several of the Garrett's we will talk about are in Africa. But anyway, here we go. And uh, a quick, a little bit of history first, and that is Kenya. Um, back in 2001, we pulled the first of three locomotives out of the museum in Kenya and got them operational. So between 2001 and 2004, three lo locomotives were removed from the museum and all were successfully put back into operating condition. Um, from about 2001 to 2011, there were multiple, uh, multiple operations with these locomotives, including very regular trips to Naivasha for local tourism. From 2011 onwards, the activity diminished and there were several reasons for this. Unfortunately, Terrorism was one of them. Uh, with that huge terrorism activity in Nairobi, it really, it really reduced the number of international visitors. The age of the artisans that used to look after the locomotives and many now have now passed away. And uh, of course, more recently, the standard gauge conversion of the line from Mombasa to Nairobi and beyond uh, using... Uh, Chinese civil engineering and Chinese equipment on long-term loans to the Kenyan government. Anyway, the reason I've included Kenya in this, uh, at the opening part of this speech is that the three locomotives remain stored in the main railway works in Nairobi, and all three are nominally operational. So should there be a will, it is still possible to put a steam locomotive on the, on the, meter gauge main line in Nairobi. And the meter gauge lines still are there around Nairobi. They're used by commuter trains. And also, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure if the meter gauge is still fully functional to Mombasa, but it's certainly there in parts as the Magadai soda trains from the dried up lake bed still use the meter gauge to run down to the port of Mombasa. So anyway, a little bit of history and a little bit of, well, maybe it might happen in the future. Uh, <clears throat> we move on to South Africa, uh, which is a very complex and unfortunately rather sad situation. Uh, in the past, steam locomotives were generally operated by clubs. These locomotives may have been privately owned, but more usually leased from the state-owned railway company or the government. Uh, as we all know, the central government today is the ANC, and their government departments are Transnet Freight, Prasa for the passenger trains, and Transnet Heritage. 
They control all the government-owned railway lines. Many, many clubs and steam operating companies have folded in the last 10 years. <clears throat> there are many, many reasons for this. But one of the primary reasons, as, as mentioned here, is that when a steam club runs a train, and let's use reef steamers as an example, although it's not just them, the reef steamers would put out a train, they would uh, agree a path with the railway, the train would set off from the depot, and somebody stole the signals, or somebody stole a piece of track. The train comes to a stop, it's got all these people captive on the train, every one of them's got a cell phone, every one of them's posting on social media what's happening to them. So the customer base diminished and diminished and diminished. The cost of operating the train increased. These clubs just went bankrupt. They couldn't pay their line access fees. They couldn't pay their coal bills. And <clears throat> there we go. Anyway, at the time of writing, after a very significant survey of all of this in the last uh, few weeks, there are currently no steam locomotive companies operating in the, on the main lines of South Africa, and there are only two on isolated branch lines. If you look at this situation even 10 years ago, um, it's a pretty sad situation. Anyway, these are the locations where steam locomotives may possibly operate in the future, and they are listed in alphabetical order, not in order of potential operation. The Apple Express has done a fantastic job of restoring three locomotives, actually, two steam and one diesel in the Humewood Road, Humewood Road Diesel Depot in Port Elizabeth. They are ready to operate on a short, uh, isolated section of track in the general Port, Orchard, Port Elizabeth area, but they await now an operating permit from... Transnet, and it is my understanding that they, along with anyone else who wants an operating permit today, they have to provide not only a sound business base, they have to provide employment for local people, and any operation today has to be put out to competitive tender. What this means is that the Apple Express who have worked on this line, not so much because some of that was done by Transnet, but they worked on these locomotives, got them into operating condition. And by competitive tender, that means that someone else can come along, make a bid that is more attractive to these government agencies and the government agencies could award the contract to operate the trains to someone else using the locomotives that Apple Express has restored. Bonfontein Locomotive Depot is now the secondary base for steam locomotive storage in South Africa after the main museum in George. There are many, many steam locomotives stored here. Some have been moved here from other locations to try and protect them. One or two of them are actually in operating condition. The Ceres Railway Company started operating about five years ago. In 2019, there were major differences within their management team. And basically, there was a parting of the ways. The Ceres Railway Company is now under new ownership. It's been reorganized, but once again, they have to apply for an operating permit. They've got three or four locomotives in operating condition. Some are stored at the Yacht Club in Cape Town. Some are in the... Uh, Prince Alfred Hamlet, which is the, the fruit growing area. What, what happens uh, is hard to say. It is most likely they will get an operating permit. Their most successful trip was to Elgin. There was a huge market in Elgin and it 
it became a destination that uh, really caught people's imagination. So people were catching these trains from Cape Town, going up over the pass to Elgin, nice lunch, buy some trinkets in the market and head back. These trains hauled about 150 people each and they would run two trains a day. We can hope that this one will come back. The Cape Western Railway Museum in Epping. There's a magnificent, there are several locomotives there. One of them is the magnificent 15F, 3153, very famous in the history of steam in uh, South Africa. Today, it was sold and was purchased by a New Zealander named Mr. Bradley. He wants to restore it to operate on the main line, but he is a locomotive owner. He's not a train operating company and is unwilling to invest the money in the restoration until he can see that there is a place to operate with one of the train operating companies. Uh, a doubtful situation. Probably the most famous branch line in South Africa is the branch line from George to Neisner. In 2006, there was a, a massive storm and a big landslip. Uh, the picture I actually took myself, I walked along the line and took this picture. <clears throat> it's hard to say if this line will be restored. It is reasonable that steam locomotives could operate from the Neisner end on an isolated branch line. <clears throat> Whether this hill can be stabilized and trains run back into George is hard to say. Anyway, there is a company, not a group, not a steam club, a company called Classic Rail who are negotiating with Transnet to run this branch line. <clears throat> this branch line does have the attention of the ANC government through the local uh, elected politicians and I've just, I've heard two things recently. One is that Transnet will repair the line starting at the Neisner end. And the second thing I've heard is that this hill on the left of this photograph is so unstable that it is possible that it will never be repaired because the entire hill could slide into the ocean. Um, <clears throat> I do not have a document with an engineer's report that tells me this, but in researching what's going on in the last few weeks to get myself up to date, this is what I've been told. George Railway Museum. <clears throat> it does contain the best collection of steam locomotives in South Africa today. It's well worth anyone's visit. Um, several of these big garrets outside are uh, very close to being in operating condition. One international tour group has had some dialogue with Transnet to putting one of these big Garrett's back into service and running it up Montague Pass. Montague Pass now rebuilt after the fire that burnt hundreds of ties. It's been open again now for about three months. And it's possible. This company that I can't even pronounce, Mopalanga, is very new on the scene. Uh, they've acquired this 19D 2767 that was stored at Creighton. This is an ex-Sapi Secor, a um, freight engine. Very worn out, but the team at Wonder Trains, Wonder Steam Trains in Pretoria said that they can rebuild it. And it was moved there from Creighton in the last uh, 60 days. And uh, they hope to run to this town of Dolstrom. I don't know very much about this. This is very, very new. The new Cape Central Railway. This is the spin-off from the breakup of the old Ceres company. Uh, this is a new company. Uh, formed by the gentleman Derek Dutot, um, who basically started Ceres. Uh, with the Ceres company, he needed some financial backers, and that's where the, that's where the issue uh, occurred. Um, the financial backer withdrew their loan, and after 
a year of negotiation, uh, there was not going to be a, a solution. So the two parties went their separate ways. Mr. Dutot has started this new company called New Cape Central Railway. Um, not much information yet. <clears throat> Once again, Mr. Dutot needs a new operating permit before he can do anything. Patton's Country Railway. <clears throat> the management team here has two lines. One is Cape Gauge, the other is Two Foot. Uh, the Cape Gauge has been active in the last 12 months, uh, most recently in February for a Valentine's Day run. <clears throat> they use this garret, uh, which is unfortunately the only garret of any kind with an operating ticket in South Africa today. Uh, it came from, they've had it now, I think about 10 years. Yeah. It's got two years left on its boiler ticket. Um, it's not in great technical shape, but it runs. And uh, a lot of people come out from areas around Durban to ride this train. They also have the use of the two foot line from Akopo to Carisbrook. They haven't been using it. They've got um, a couple of garrets that have technical issues. They have the diesel shown, which runs, and they have this little uh, Avon side tank locomotive, which runs. But uh, as far as I know, no trains have run it in about 18 months. They appear to be concentrating on their Cape Gauge line at Creighton. And I would imagine the reason for that is they've got the passenger cars to haul a good, good load of passengers and actually make some money. Reef Steamers. Reef Steamers is one of those clubs who, with diminishing passenger loads, could not pay their bills, became insolvent. Uh, they do have a secure compound at the Germiston Steam Shed. There are many, many locomotives there. As stated, there were one, two, three, four in operating condition when they closed their doors. The Garrett showed is uh, stored there. It does not belong to them. I don't think any of these locomotives actually belong to them. They're pretty well all leased from the um, uh, Transnet Heritage Foundation. They carry a white plate on the cab to these to this. The uh, the Garrett 4079 XREGM is actually uh, owned by Sandstone, the Mole family. Robos Rail, a fantastic operation. You know, if you want to sell your house and go on, a, on an excursion, this would be the one to go on. Uh, you can go all the way up to Dar es Salaam from Pretoria. But today it's all diesel. Some electric, but mainly all diesel. They've purchased, I think, 14 diesel locomotives from Australia. Uh, they would have come from uh, Queensland on the, on, the, on the Cape Gauge rails in Queensland. These locomotives run their excursions, highly successful. They keep a couple of steam locomotives in operating condition, primarily this 19D 3360, and they steam it up when there's an excursion leaving, put it on the front of the train. The passengers from all over the world come and stand by the steam engine or sit in the cab, have their picture taken. The steam engine may draw the train forward a few hundred yards. It comes off, the diesels go on and off they go. So, you know, <clears throat> Uh, worth a mention because there is there are steam locomotives and they do operate, but only within the confines of the depot. Sandstone, a fantastic operation. Probably 20 to 25 steam locomotives in operating condition, a total collection of somewhere around 60 locomotives, all on this farm. All, all on a working farm over by Lesotho. No center of population anywhere close. By their own admission, they can go six months and not see a single visitor. They open about two weekends a year. Highly recommended if you can get there. But really, uh, I, it's necessary to mention this operation, but it is not... It's not South Africa main line. It's an isolated uh, facility on a working farm. 
if you look up uh, Lesotho, uh, the the edge of the track, when you go around the balloon loop and look across to the south, you can see the country of Lesotho in the in in front of you. Steamnet 2000. This is at the old Beaconsfield Railway Depot in Kimberley. In recent times, with mainly with uh, foreign capital, they've put two 25 NCs back into service. They have boiler tickets, but they have no operating permit for the main line. And um, there is negotiations in the background to get one, just like there are with all these other clubs. I honestly can't tell you if they will achieve. One of the main considerations here is, is um, these locomotives are kept around the old coaling stage, which you can see behind this 25 NC. Um, no real workshop out in the open. Uh, not clear to me where any major work would be done to these locomotives. <clears throat> but they're trying very hard, and they do have two locomotives with boiler tickets. We will have to see what happens in the next 12 months. I'm getting steam railway, USR, by far and away the most successful uh, operation in South Africa today. They run one Sunday a month, a couple of trains. They have one locomotive serviceable. They're working on a second one. Uh, a highly talented engineering team behind them. Uh, fairly close to Durban, so a good catchment area for passengers. We wish them the best. We really do. Okay. <clears throat> Vorbei. At Vorbei, there's a locomotive depot, and it's become a restoration facility in recent years. The four or five locomotives for Ceres were all restored here. Uh, two locomotives for private owners who bought the locomotives from Transnet, were also restored here. There are about 15 locomotives left. They all look very similar to this one. They are being eaten up by the salt air. There's a small private company that works here doing these restorations. The <clears throat> locomotives for the Neisner branch, should an operating be permit, permit be given there, will come from this depot. How many? It's hard to say. About eight of them are what's called in South African parlance ring fenced or reserved for this Neisner operation. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Um, the team stands ready to work on these locomotives. It needs to be sooner than later. The boilers on these locomotives are corroding from the outside in because of the salt air. Once again, we wish them the best. Wonder Steam Trains. Wonder Steam Trains took over the operation of the long time and very famous group, Friends of the Rail. Friends of the Rail, again, became insolvent for the reasons stated. People stealing the tracks from in front, of the, in front of their locomotives, bad publicity, diminishing passenger loads, couldn't pay their track access fees, couldn't pay their coal bills. Uh, a small group uh, took over the depot after Friends of the Rail became insolvent. That group is run by a gentleman named Les Labuschagne. Extremely committed, got money, got local involvement. As you can see, it's got four locomotives now, normally operational really thought he was in line for an operating permit. And then the rules got changed. Having a, having a business built on a solid base, having operational locomotives is no longer enough. Now, before he can get his operating permit, other people have to uh, have the chance to uh, bid, on the, uh, bid on the permit. I think probably he still has to prove that he's got local people employed, although that's a bit of a guess. The main issue is this business of competitive tender. They're 
The long time branch line to Cullinan has been closed. This is where the rails were stolen twice from in front of locomotives. And now it's said that there is mining, coal, coal mining or diamond mining subsidence under the tracks, which has caused the track to be closed. They have other, other uh, destinations in mind, but until they can get an operating permit, nothing's happening. In the meantime, they've taken on the uh, overhaul of the locomotive for the other company. And um, it's very possible they could overhaul a garret here um, for the new Cape Central Railway. That garret being 4135, which was rescued from the jaws of the scrapman two or three years ago. And that leads us to this operation. One may have concluded from this not very positive uh, portion of the talk that things are in very difficult shape in uh, South Africa right now because of the issues with the central government oversight and interference. So a gentleman named Andreas Kaiser, with the help of uh, a landowner outside of Cape Town in the wine growing region of Stellenbosch, decided to build a commercial miniature railway. He teamed up with a locomotive builder who sent six locomotives, I believe, on lease, some like these, and also uh, two garrets. They built the railway. It's a fantastic operation. It, because the gauge is reduced, they don't have the central government oversight is uh, non-existent. It's very close to a major population center. It is not unusual for this little railway to haul four to 500 people on a weekend. I asked recently and was told a typical average for a two day weekend is 400 people. Everybody has a good time. The trains run when the sun shines close to a business population. This really at the moment is the future of uh, steam trains in South Africa. A quick list of operational steam locomotives, most with nowhere to run at the moment. Multiple classes, as you can see, 19Ds dominate. Of this list, as it states at the bottom, only the USR 2685 and the Creighton operation 4126, which runs as 4074, have operated in 2020, but we all know the reason for that. You'll note that the class 26, the Red Devil is on the list. The Red Devil was loaned, not leased, to Ceres. They paid a substantial amount of money to put it back in service, but the operating restrictions on it, it could only run in the winter months, in the rainy season, because it's still coal fired and there's no line side maintenance anymore. <clears throat> I don't know if Ceres will take it back on. There's some talk that Transnet want to run it themselves. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. Right now it's sitting in the open at the Yacht Club in Cape Town and the Salt Air once again is getting hold of it again. Really needs to be in a, uh, in a, in a building, locked up in a shed. Hard to say what will happen unless there is a conversion to oil firing, which in real reality, the 99%, that's the customers won't care about. The goal for this locomotive originally was to capture cruise ship passengers and take them to a wine growing reason for a, an afternoon lunch and a glass of wine and then bring them back to the ship. I think that might have happened once. Uh, we'll have to see what happens in the future, but it is on the list as an operating locomotive uh, going into 2021. Moving on, we're leaving South Africa now, going to Togo. A quick mention here. Uh, 20 years ago, these two YP, Indian YP locomotives 
were purchased privately and sent to Togo, where the owner thought he was going to get the concession to operate the railway. He didn't get the concession. The locomotives were sat there for 20 years. They were in operating condition on, on arrival. There are ongoing discussions to move them back to India, but it's a very complicated situation, and I can't tell you if it will happen. But there they are. They're locked in a shed. There is security on them, and we'll have to wait and see. Zambia. <clears throat> right now, the shining star, really. Uh, Bush Tracks, privately owned company, has an operating agreement in Zambia and Zimbabwe to run dinner trains around Victoria Falls. They have four of these former Rhodesian Railway Class 14A Garrets. Uh, two they own outright, two are on lease from a individual. And they also have two straight locomotives, a 10th and a 12th, which are really in quite poor condition today and are going to be returned to their owners. One is to the uh, railway and one is to the state of Zambia. And they'll, those, the 10th and the 12th will probably get pushed into the museum in Livingston. Their future is these four 14As. They successfully restored 523, which they brought in from Botswana. 520 is next. They have 516 stored at the museum in Bulawayo. It's due to be drawn up to Victoria Falls. This is a wonderful operation. They are great people. They put on a great show. They have a destination, a world-class destination in Victoria Falls. Once the current COVID crisis is over, which has hit them badly because Literally 100% of their customer base is international tourism. People fly into Victoria Falls in groups or individually. They stay at a hotel, take the dinner train, have a really good time. Zimbabwe. The Victoria Falls activity aside, which is private, there are three locomotives at the moment that are kept in the uh, old steam shed in Bulawayo and used uh, very occasionally, uh, as it states, for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, etc. Or sometimes a foreign funded charter comes and, and uh, charters a, a train that runs up to Victoria Falls. This happens every two or three years. Uh, <clears throat> the issue here is the loss of their skilled artisans at the Bulawayo steam shed people moving overseas, looking for work, regular work where they can get paid. But they do have three steam locomotives and they do run. Uh, people say, well, what about Hawangi? Well, Hawangi used leased locomotives from Bulawayo for about the last five years. Uh, they lost their skilled artisans. The locomotives were abused. <clears throat> the last one went back with a broken crank pin. Uh, so Wangi stopped using steam in 2018. There are several sitting on site. Most of the straights, most of the 19th have already been uh, scrapped. There are probably four Garrett's still sitting there in various states of disrepair. Uh, today, if a Wangi needs a, a train move, they bring up a diesel from Thompson Junction. I guess <clears throat> I took this picture. I guess this will be my last memory of a Wangi. This was a, a 16th brought up from Bulawayo to uh, run here for its 30 day period. Um, they broke it right in this picture. It had been uh, repaired and was due to be put in steam later that day. You can see one of the old 19th in the background. Uh, these were all cut up in the last couple of years. There's a very, a very reasonable, I won't say good, but reasonable state run railway museum in Bulawayo. Quite a few exhibits, steam and diesel. If you're in country, it's worth your time. And I thought it proper to mention that uh, also in Africa are these other um, locations with museums, absolutely all static, Cairo, Freetown, Lagos, Maputo, and Windhoek. Uh, some think that uh, one or two of the locomotives in Maputo uh, could actually be put back in service, but uh, I think somewhat unlikely. 
<clears throat> just a quick point out that uh, I've just gone through several locations and several countries and uh, <clears throat> plenty, of, um, plenty of information on Google. Most of the operations in South Africa have either a Facebook page or a website. Uh, Nairobi has Facebook presence these days. Bush Tracks has a website. It can all be found. Uh, I, I feel necessary to put this note in there. You may find that like, you can just wander into the Bulawayo steam shed or even into the steam yard in uh, Livingston, Bush Tracks, and South Africa too. But please, please get permission before wandering in. And uh, just there's my email address. If you have any comments or uh, questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, so that's my overview of Africa. I will now just quickly move over to operational garrets in the world. And once again, please don't yawn when you see some duplication, but uh, uh, it's a separate presentation which must stand on its own. There we go. Operational garrets worldwide in 2021. Um, <clears throat> Once again, uh, alphabetical order. I always include this railway. This is at Ushuaia. They build themselves at the bottom of the world railway. This is in Ushuaia at the very tip, southern tip of Argentina. It's a very special place. It's only a short run. Goes from the railway station to the uh, water's edge at the national park. Um, they have two of these garrets with a third under construction. Uh, you can see that this is an unusual looking beast. Cylinders are inboard. You can see the cylinders under the cab and the cylinders under the gentleman's feet. This is the same as the uh, original garret, the K1 from 1909. Um, you can see the very tall conical chimney. Uh, these are what you would describe as modern steam. They have several devices on them to make them run more efficiently, including the Lempor exhaust. Um, these are oil burners. Uh, they are single man operation. In other words, the firing controls for the oil burner are on the driver's side of the cab and the driver is required to maintain the water, maintain the fire and drive the locomotive. Uh, very successful operation, which unfortunately has been hit bad by the COVID, op COVID situation because once again, 99 to 100% of their passengers come off cruise ships that call into the port of Ushuaia. These locomotives, this one was built in South Africa by Phil Girdlestone. Uh, the second one was built locally and then rebuilt to the same concept as this one by a gentleman named Sean McMahon. So this is the work of Sean McMahon and Phil Girdlestone using the principles of the famous Argentine engineer, Dante Porter. Should you ever take a cruise around the Cape Horn or to Antarctica, maybe from Rio to Santiago, your ship will almost stop in Ushuaia, and this should be your shore excursion. Australia, two, 10, 15 years ago, Australia had no operational garrets. Today they have, as you will see, this is a, what's called an ASG or Australian standard garret, G33. I believe it's the only one surviving. It was stored for 50 odd years. It's now being rebuilt at Queenscliff near Melbourne and it will steam again. They're, they're at the point now where they know what they have they know what they have to do. Uh, just a small team working on it, but it will steam again. This is the New South Wales Government Railway AD60, which I describe as the flagship of the operating garrets today. It stood aside in uh, 2020 uh, because of COVID issues. In the last week, it's uh, been steamed. 
uh, after receiving some maintenance, it's got a fresh boiler ticket, and it's ready for the 2021 operating season. If you're curious where this picture was taken, the locomotive today, while it was restored to operating condition in Canberra, that operation folded, and the locomotive was purchased privately by a gentleman named David Somerville, and he very cleverly negotiated a homing base for it at the Thurmill Railway Museum in New South Wales. So it's in this environment now, as you can see the roundhouse, it's got a full workshop behind it. Uh, Thirlmere gets fantastic publicity for their museum. And Mr. Somerville has a really good home for his locomotive and the future is very good for this, for this operation. Um, very dormant in 2020, but we'll come back. You know, it, it, you could expect it to run six, eight, 10 times a year, may, maybe closer to six on the main line. It's mainline certified. It's in good technical shape now. The, the rear engine unit, the rear power unit was completely bush, uh, rebushed here over the last 12 months, all new pins and bushings. Uh, it was reboiled when it was overhauled by a, a boiler that was sold to a sawmill from the government back in the 80s. This boiler was rescued and fitted to the locomotive. It's had extensive boiler work performed in 2018. Uh, she's in very good shape. Also in Australia is this South African NG16. Uh, completely rebuilt from the ground up, regaged from two foot to two foot six. Uh, <clears throat> sitting at the moment, uh, waiting for some minor, minor work, but basically in uh, fully overhauled operating condition. G42 is a bare peacock product, but was built for Australia, two foot six gauge, sat out of use for 50 odd years, was rebuilt around 2005, 2006, uh, is actually due to come out of service when the 129 goes into service. Uh, the wheel arrangement on this one is such that the uh, it, on this twisty track, it, it has extensive tire wear. So they tend at the moment to only use it on Saturdays on a very heavy uh, lunchtime train, it haul, uh, hauling 17 cars. I'll mention this one. This is 127. It's the same class as 129. It's been brought over from uh, South Africa and is awaiting the funding and to rebuild it to two foot six. Uh, so, <clears throat> Talking about centers of population, the Puffing Billy Railway that these locomotives run on is right outside Melbourne. It's a very popular vacation destination for uh, Asian tourists. Um, the passenger loadings on the Puffing Billy go up every year. Uh, <clears throat> there's two factions on this railway. The one wants to keep it traditional with their 262 tank locomotives. The other faction are the realists who say, well, we have to put two of those 262 tank locomotives on the front of the train or one of these garrets. Uh, if we have two locomotives, that's two fireboxes to feed, two drivers. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I, I, of course, uh, I'm, because of my personal interest, I like the garrets, but also I understand the logic of using garrets on this, on this railway. Uh, you're talking half a million to 600,000 passengers a year riding this railway. It is uh, by far a shining star of, of people who understand what, what's got to go on to uh, as, a, as a tourist spread out. Is that to intervene, Trevor? Uh, yes, sir. I know we started a little bit late, but we are still uh, running over time now. If you can compete in the next five, five to 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, this is the K1. It's the only operating garret in England. <clears throat> Now you got me all flustered, sir. Anyway, this is the only operating garret in England. It's the K1, the original garret from 1909, restored by the Festiniog Railway, ran for some time in North Wales, not powerful enough, moved to the Statfold Railway in central England in operating condition. Now we come to this baby that you'll all be familiar with, the N-class garret at Carrickpore. Uh, Nominally or technically in operating condition, but um, 
I'm told twice now in the last 30 days on two separate sources, there is no money, no desire, and very little interest in operating this locomotive. Uh, I asked if it should be moved to Rewari where people can view it. Um, I'm afraid the answer, I, no answer, no reply on, on, on if that was a possibility. So it's pushed in the back of the shed at Karapur, out of public sight, and uh, a great shame, a great shame. This is our New Zealand, 14A509, moved here in 2009. Uh, I worked on this locomotive myself for six months, uh, getting it into the loading gauge for New Zealand, uh, dropping all the wheels to reprofile the tires. Um, it, technically, it could operate in the... If the work was finished on the oil firing system, and, and as you see, it needs lagging on the boiler, it's already got a boiler ticket. Uh, it could well be made to run within six months. Uh, no work has been done on it in the last 12. South Africa, we've really talked about already. Um, the main potential with Garrett's in the future is this locomotive 4135, which is at the Wonder Trains facility. This picture is actually of it operating in uh, Zimbabwe a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> possible that it will be returned to steam. Patton's country, Akopo, they have several locomotives at Creighton and Akopo. This one they rescued, trying to raise the funds to rebuild it, 2621. This is the NG16116, which was rebuilt using major components from the very last NG16 built, uh, 156. Uh, has steamed. There, I've seen pictures of it in steam, but it has not made a run across the line to Carisbrook since it was put back in steam in 2017. This is their Garrett that runs as recently as Valentine's Day. This is 4074. Sandstone. Sandstone has five Garrett's and is working on a sixth. Uh, if you can catch one of their weekends, uh, well, worth it, well worth your time. Um, once again, a fantastic operation that is very underutilized. I'll just finish with this one. This is the NG16A, a, mod a highly modified locomotive by Phil Girdlestone. This is the second one, 155. Um, unfortunately, parts of this locomotive were scrapped in 2017. So it was decided because there were two 16As, both in very poor condition, to build one out of the two. And Sandstone is working on this. Wonder Trains did the boiler for them. Uh, the boiler's back, as you can see, it's been overhauled. Uh, this locomotive is expected to operate later this year. Um, when it'll be uh, presented to the public, I don't know. There's some talk of Sandstone operating all six of their Garrett's at one time and trying to claim some kind of record. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Apple Express, we already talked about, trying to get an operating license. Uh, they have this locomotive, 131. It needs some boiler work, but it's been kept inside for the last 20 odd years and is cosmetically in decent shape, but does need some boiler work. And that brings us back again to Winelands, who have two Garrett's that they run occasionally. Uh, when they're very busy and they need the pulling capacity, they use these big Garrett's or they double head their singles. Once again, when they double head, they got to have two drivers. Uh, these Garrett's uh, are available. And uh, I just finished with this because I really do think that in the present climate in South Africa, this private railway with no government interference on private land, uh, has found the solution going forward. Another picture. You can see the beautifully landscaped land, the beautiful track. 
now building a workshop capable of building locomotives on site. The Welsh Highland Railway, getting to the end of the presentation now. The Welsh Highland has five of these NG16s. Uh, 130, shown in the picture, has just been completely rebuilt over five years with private money from scrap condition. Just, the, just in the last few weeks has passed its uh, light engine testing and now goes on to uh, load testing next week. Owned by a gentleman named Peter Best, who is well known in England for uh, owning several locomotives. Uh, the rest of the fleet, not in such good shape. 87 is nominally in, uh, uh, sorry, 87 is in service. Um, <clears throat> these two locomotives are expected to operate in 2021 and haul all the service trains. 138 is out of service. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice here I say it's waiting for a replacement boiler. Uh, how quickly the the situation changes. It's now, I believe, been decided that the boiler that was going on 138 will go on 143 because 143 is in better mechanical condition. The fifth locomotive, 140, donated to the railway by uh, several gentlemen from Switzerland, uh, was taken apart and used for spares. It's never actually run in Wales. So they have five of these, four that is their core fleet and one for spare parts. Uh, it's a great operation, a great railway. Uh, should you get to the UK, um, this should be on your list. Uh, but of course, there are so many, many choices in the UK on, on lines to go and mainline operations and all of that. Not really the remit of, of this conversation. The Vela Rydal got this NG13 from Switzerland in operating condition, but such are the rules in the UK that they had to tear the boiler, which had a boiler ticket. They had to tear it all apart uh, for an internal examination, retube it. And uh, it's all back together now and should run in 2021. But talk about a sledgehammer to crack a nut. This locomotive on that railway uh, <clears throat> is, uh, well, it'll be nice to look at. And the United States. The United North America, Never had any Garrett's. Uh, you know, they took the uh, articulated Malay route, uh, uh, simple articulated. Uh, never, never, never decided, never chose to um, purchase any Garrett's, even though there were proposals for them to operate in the mountains, for example, in Colorado. Uh, a, a family in Hempstead, Texas, purchased this uh, NG13 in the mid 80s, brought it back in operating condition, ran it for about, ran it for about 10 years. Uh, it sat then for another 10 years, and then they had the boiler professionally overhauled and put it back into service uh, about four years ago. And they run it occasionally. It's a completely private operation. Very rare to get an invitation to see it operating. Although very surprisingly, a YouTube video of it moving appeared about a month ago. Zambia, we've talked about already, and Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has these, uh, the 15A, a 14A, and a 16A, one of each normally in operating condition, and a second 15A. They've got a, a yard full of locomotives, probably numbering 50, which you could, would call hulks. Um, as seen in this picture, very occasionally, they can be seen shunting around Bulawayo, mainly for crew training for excursions. They, they operate the uh, excursions so infrequently that they put the locomotive out on shunts so that the fireman and the driver can get uh, familiar again with the controls. And there we go. Uh, I personally run a Facebook group called Surviving Garrett Locomotives. And there's the URL for it, or you can just type Surviving Garrett Locomotives into the search on Facebook. And I try to update uh, whenever news becomes available of these Garrett's and what's happening to them. And I would really like some great news on that N class at Carrickpore. You know, perhaps somebody listening to this uh, presentation has some influence or some news or can do something to get that locomotive, at least to where the public can see it. 
And that, gentlemen, is my presentation. I hope it was informative. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Trevor. I think the word informative is too mild for what you have given us. See, most of us in India, even those who are interested, tend to know a lot about locomotives and railways in UK or Europe or North America. We know almost nothing about Africa. Even, for instance, I've been to almost all the railway systems in Africa, but I never looked at the steams. We worked on the diesels. So, therefore, your presentation was absolutely informative. Uh, there are a number of comments which I won't read out, but they all basically said the same thing. That this was the most comprehensive uh, presentation we've had of steam position in Africa. The same applies to the Garrets. We do have a vague idea of Garrets, uh, maybe in Europe and North America, but no idea at all of what is happening in Africa. So thank you very much. It was a very informative uh, talk and a most appropriate talk. It gave us, uh, it told us about that part of the world, which we normally don't uh, think too much about and don't know anything about at all. Thank you very much. Uh, you're quite uh, welcome, sir. Uh, let me see if there's any question on chat. I don't think there's any, there, like, there are a number of comments. Uh, there's a question of what happened to the MG Garrett's on the half long section. There is one lying at the Tinsukia Museum, but that is not in working order. Yeah, correct. I, there, there, are, there are Garrett's all over the world in- uh, Yeah, which are not in working order. And uh, laying about on sidings, but I, um, I, I personally, I just concentrate on those that are operational or likely to be made operational. There are uh, some comments, fantastic presentation on scheme in Africa. Very little information is available on the actual situation. Trevor's talk has given a great overview. Very engaging presentation by Trevor Heath. I mean, comments like that. Um, okay. Well, that, thank you. That's that's fine. Of course, one uh, is interesting. It says maybe Trevor's suggestion to move the southeastern railway to Rewali is sound. Well, At least some, then, as you said, the public can see it. Something's got to be done with that with eight eleven. You know, to push it back into the shed at Karagpur, mm. where it lay from nineteen seventy to two thousand four, and then and then again from two thousand six to two thousand seventeen. This is a real shame for a fantastic uh, piece of equipment, you know? Mm. I mean, I do understand if there's no funding to operate, operate it, or maybe, maybe they're worried that if they operate it, they don't have the, the parts to repair it. I don't know, but it should be on display somewhere so the public can see it, you know? Of course, a dozen of the, of the of 811 is lying at the National Rail Museum in New Delhi, but that is only a, sh um, it's not in working order at all. Right, right. I mean, Surely if this one was moved, well, yes, and I see the point there, Ruwari and New Delhi being so close together, maybe Ruwari isn't the right place for it, you know? Good, I mean, that's a good, that's a very valid point, but surely there, surely there's a place where it could be put where the public can see it, you know? Anyway, thank you once again, Trevor, for a very informative and uh, very appropriate, uh, in fact, two presentations for us. Yeah, you're quite welcome. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. And sorry to wake you up so early in the morning. Oh, no, that's fine. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Over to you, Mayank. Uh, well, an amazing presentation, a great way to end the conference, sir. Uh, all I can say is that uh, these two days have been absolutely remarkable for those of us who worked to put the conference together. It was very encouraging for us to see the kind of response that we've got. Uh, we only feel more enthused to bring to you more such events. Uh, but without much further ado, sir, all I can say is, the one thing is now certain, we are going to make this an annual event and we look forward to your support from across the globe, both by way of being speakers and by way of being informed participants so that all of us can keep meeting every year to have a lot of fun together. Uh, could I, uh, could I invite Vinu Mathur, sir, for some last words before we close the session for the day, please? Yeah, th thanks, Mank. It's been, a, it's, a, it's been a long day, but a, a very enjoyable day. We have had some very uh, uh, 
we've had some wonderful presentations. Um, uh, in the morning, we started with Paul Thiru answering a large number of questions and the changes that he is seeing uh, around the world, whether it is Vietnam, Afghanistan, um, and his fascination for, for India. Thereafter, we had a wonderful presentation by Arup Chatterjee, bringing in an entirely new perspective on, uh, on the uh, impact the railways have had in, in India uh, uh, from and the change that has taken place from the late 19th century to early 20th century and finally to the current period. Uh, and I think his analysis was very, very interesting. Tarun Thakral de thereafter made a, 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 a wonderful presentation about the museum which he runs. Uh, it's been an entirely individual initiative and he has got some wonderful exhibits, whether it be a, be, be, when we, a steaming locomotive, a, a coach, some very nice photographs and all modes of transport. Uh, Michael Whitehouse gave us his uh, uh, the benefit of his experience of over half a century of uh, vintage train operation in, in the United Kingdom, of how painstakingly he has piloted uh, this movement and currently uh, runs a major operation in, in the United Kingdom although he highlighted the challenges of uh, uh, training additional people and how do we extend the life of the existing locomotives. Ashwini Lohani uh, took us on a, a, a brief visit about the effort to revive steam in India, the creation of Rewadi Shed, the working of steam on the mountain railways and much else. And uh, I do hope that in India, the, the efforts that he had initiated will be followed up and we will make progress in this area. We had an excellent presentation by Alexander Karnes, who really brought out his passion, his professional skill, and, and, and the kind of qualities that you require to really do a, a, a competent job in resuscitating old steam engines, whether they are locomotives or whether they are in textile mills or whether they are for pumping water and so on. Um, lastly, we had a, a, a very fine presentation by Trevor Heath. Um, uh, uh, really, it was very enlightening because I did not know that there were so many, perhaps much more than uh, anywhere in Asia, of steam locomotives in fairly good fettle uh, in, in, the, in Africa, in many countries of Africa. Uh, I was only familiar with Rovos Rail, but uh, there are so many engines of all varieties in Africa. So it's been a good day, an entertaining day, uh, and I hope our, our viewers have benefited from it. I would like to again express my thanks to all the speakers and, for, and to all the participants uh, who have uh, been with us virtually the entire day uh, uh, following the speaker. So thank you once again, and we look forward to meeting again, perhaps early next year. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, sir. And with that, we formally close the first ever global conference organized with, by the Rail Enthusiast Society with the promise that we shall be back next year. Thank you so much, everyone.